What's up, comrades? Welcome to tonight's show. We have some friends of ours because a friend of BRG's is a friend of yours. And a friend of the people is a friend of yours because you, you know what? Fuck it, fuck it. This is um, Upstate New York SRA. They have been so nice as to come on the show tonight and expose themselves to my Maoist snark. So uh, you all can go ahead and introduce yourselves. Uh, Joe, you want to go first? Yeah, um, I'm uh, soup for my family. Uh, pronouns are he, him. I've been a member of the chapter for about three years now. N nice to be on. Right, I'll jump in here. Uh, my name is Fox. I'm the range operations director for the Upstate New York Socialist Rifle Association chapter. Um, I've been a member of the organization for, I think, either two or three years here. And uh, as Joe said, it's an absolute pleasure to be here. Last. Hello, I am Lysentia. My pronouns are she, her, and I have been a member of the SRA for a little over a year. And uh, my name is Smedley Butler's Ghost. I'm the outreach director and I'm a member of the uh, National SRA as a assembly member. And I've been a member of the SRA for around three and a half years. Okay, so I've got a video um, that the national um, national organ of the Socialist Rifle Association, that's what SRA stands for, uh, put out on gun control. Everybody already knows my position on gun control. We need to control saltines, not weapons. So yeah. let's see what we have going here. You know, there's a funny thing. Like, I, I love how you all had the, like, hip-hop introduction because a lot of... We were talking about we were talking shit about MAGA comps and Pat Soaps. A lot of them actually think that hip hop is lumpen and reactionary. <laughs> I'm I'm not surprised. Yeah, so it's really it's really dope that you all are like trying to appeal to a broader audience because like that's this is what our generation, millennials and zoomers, well, I think we have one Gen Xer here, but you all shit, you all basically invented hip hop. So Yeah. Um, so it's cool that like you're not just playing some old Paul Robeson recording. Keep in mind, I love Paul Robeson, but nobody is riding around or going to protest bumping Paul Robeson records. Um, so we have to keep in mind that hip hop is the soundtrack to the revolution all over the world. Yeah. Like I had I had a fucking Palestinian drill song playing a couple weeks ago. Um, I mean, if you remember um, in Greece, Pablo Frias, who was um, a Greek anti-fascist rapper who was murdered by Golden Dawn. Uh, I mean, um, but yeah, of course, there's always room for the classics. Like, I always enjoy some Woody Guthrie, but it's obvious that it's not the most popular as it was back in the day, of course. I don't even think it was all that popular back then, to be honest. Like Mostly people, in certain circles. Yeah, like white people were listening to, they weren't listening to Woody Guthrie. They were listening to fucking Hank Williams. Black yeah. people black people weren't listening to Paul Robeson. They were listening to Jump Blues. Mm. Like be beans and cornbread, that type of shit. All right, so let's see what the SRA thinks about gun control. I think I already know what they think about gun control because they are literally the Socialist Rifle Association. But who knows? Maybe I'll be surprised. I keep coming back to this because I see it over and over again. Most recently after the Las Vegas shooting. When you ban guns and then proceed to study gun related homicides and gun related suicides, of course they will decrease. There's no surprise in that. Just like if you were to ban antibiotics, there would be a dramatic decrease in the number of antibiotic related deaths. Anytime you decrease the availability of X, deaths related to X also decrease. So what? No one should be jumping for joy upon finding out deaths from X decreased. It doesn't answer the question of causality. Let's pretend you banned antibiotics. Deaths related to antibiotics decrease. You point to that and say, wow. Just a little critique of the production quality. He has a shitload of background noise and he needs a better mic. Look at how many lives we're saving. Well, no, there's nothing about your statistic that indicates any lives have been saved whatsoever. 
You have no way of even knowing that from that statistic. In fact, given what we know about antibiotics and their life-saving capacity, you probably have killed more people by banning them than you have saved. That's the problem we face when focusing our view only on gun-related deaths after banning guns. It tells us nothing. Nearly all gun-related deaths are intentional, something like over 99%. People are either intentionally killing other people or intentionally killing themselves. Because the deaths are intentional, when guns become unavailable, you run into the problem of substitution. Someone highly intent on killing themselves or killing other people might very well just proceed with their intention by using other means. For example, in Australia they ban guns. Cool! Head on over to the Australian Institute of Criminology, a government agency that keeps track of statistics on crime, and take a look at murders by way it's hilarious that Australia was literally founded as a place to keep criminal criminals, and now they have an institute of criminology. They might, just yeah. call it, they might as well just call it the Australian Studies Institute. Exactly. I'm studying my ancestors. They'd have a laugh. Weapons type over time. Totally a British fucking Notice idea. Anything? Like, we have too many murders related yeah, to guns. Just put them on that island over there. And It'd murders related to knives They're are mostly just Irish. You That's know? not even people. Put them away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and Actually, you have some cool Australians like Ned Kelly who fought against the police and the system and shit like that. And, and a lot of those, a lot of those early Bush Rangers were actually black. Like, um, mm. yeah, there were quite a few black people in um in the UK. Like immediately after the American Revolution, um, a lot of black people who fought for the uh, who fought for the British black Tories or black loyalists. They ended up in either Nova Scotia or they ended up in London. And in mm. London, in London, they ended up becoming part of what you would call the black poor because it's not like, it's not like little Lord Buttfuck was going to hire him to work at the estate. Um, mm. So um, yeah, a lot of those people ended up being transported to Australia as well. Um, and like there was one guy, he was a, uh, he was a literal Bush Ranger. I think his name was like black Tom or black Jack or something. He was born in the West Indies. But somehow you I, uh, I should look into that because the only Bush Ranger I really know is Ned Kelly because of the fucking suit of armor he had. And you know, that's the big thing about him. Yeah, that but fallout also, that fallout type deal he was wearing. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, look, based beyond all aspects, him wearing a suit of armor made out of plowshares and shooting at police. Um he's a hero, so I don't give a shit. And I won't have any arguments against it. He was still, he was, yeah, he was still squatting on Aboriginal land, but yeah. sadly that is the case. Yes. Yeah. Problem of substitution. It happens with mass murder. Also, the Orlando Pulse shooting could have happened with a gun. Yes, it did, but it probably could have happened just as well with a chain on the door and some gasoline and some matches. Las Vegas happened with a gun. Yes but it might have happened just as well with a large truck. And that's what we see in Australia after the Port Arthur massacre that took place in 1996. Yes, shootings have declined, but arson attacks, vehicle attacks, stabbings, and even shootings have still taken place. I'm not saying gun control will have no impact on the murder rate or the rate of death due to massacre, but any analysis that looks at gun deaths after banning guns presents the facts in a disturbingly misleading way in order to prop up a narrative. Democrat, Republican, know the difference between the two. So, uh, for sure. Um, I agree with everything that he said. Like, banning guns is, first of all, it's not going to happen because unlike Australia, the United States uh, has the right to bear arms enshrined in our Constitution. It's probably the, probably the, uh, along with the Reconstruction Amendments and the First Amendment that grants us the right to say whatever stupid shit that we want. Of course, we know that in practice, uh, people get punished for their speech all the time. But like the Second Amendment is based, even though it was originally intended only for white people, like they were not handing out guns to slaves because that would be very, very dumb on their part. It would be very, very, it would be very, very based for us. We wouldn't have like we would have been able to liberate ourselves like 50 or 60 years before we did. But um but um, actually, some slave owners, like when the um, when Sherman came rolling through, Sherman of blessed memory, 
Although, oh, yes. although when you read, um, he after he got done with the Civil War, he uh, ended up out west helping to massacre and subdue the Lakota and Cheyenne people. So, yeah, um, yeah, great warrior Sherman wasn't exactly one hundred percent based. It, and, it's so bad that even the people on like r slash Sherman posting agree. It's like, yeah, what he did afterwards was fucking bad. And if you praise it, then get the hell out of here. Yeah. Yeah. Doc, you actually have people that are going around saying, oh yeah, based, he got those savages under control. I'm like, well, Ugh. yeah. But, um, so socialist rifle association, that is you all's group. Um, they put out a statement. Um, well, y'all put out a statement on your national webpage saying that we stand with the oppressed, we stand with the colonized and oppressed people of Palestine. This does not necessitate that we condone the actions of the H group, much less than it does require that we condemn them. We are not also precluded from standing with the civilians in Israel who are suffering, not only from, uh, not only from Hamas's attacks, but from the internal colonialization of the state of Israel. It was for these reasons that we must condemn the anti-Semitism and, homof- and Islamophobia that which are being stoked at this time. The media's conflation of Palestinians with Hamas or Jews with Israel is having the real-world effect of increased hate crimes against our fellow humans. This conflation also has the effect of obfuscating with actual anti-Semitism and Islamophobia look like, thus making them harder to fight. Um, this is probably one of the most advanced statements that I've read. Um, I understand that the uh, SRA is a relatively ideologically eclectic group, like it's not 100% anarchist, or it's not 100% communist, but like, um, it's amazing that you all were able to get together and put out this like common sense statement, like, yeah, we're not going to sit and act as if anti-Semitism is not a problem, because it is, but we also have to recognize that Islamophobia is, uh, it's what's trending now, like it's what's getting people fired from their jobs, like in Chicago a couple weeks ago, um, little kid, six year old baby, was uh, stabbed to death along with his mother by a reactionary landlord. Mm. So we have to keep that in mind. Like, uh, as a Maoist, uh, we recognize the primary and secondary contradiction. Like, right now, the primary contradiction would be the fact that, uh, that Muslims are being attacked. Does that mean that we ignore our Jewish comrades, many of whom have been the most virulent and common sense voices against what is being done in their name? No. But we also have to realize that, like, street mischief is not, like, it's not tantamount to the systemic oppression and harassment that uh, that Muslims and people who are standing in support, public support for the Palestinian people as they're being, um, as they're engaged in a struggle for national liberation um, are facing. So, this is cool. There's also uh, quite a few links. Uh, Médicine Sans Frontières. Doctors Without Borders, Action Aid, and Era UNICEF, and the IFRC. So, um, we got y'all here. Um, I guess we could just talk about, like, when I think of gun rights, I don't think about uh, New York. Like, I think of New York, and most other people think of New York as a place that, like, isn't very amenable to, um, to armed anybody, never mind armed leftists. But you all that are not... Be, a- yeah, that'd be understating it, to be honest. Yeah. Um, but you all are in New York City. You all are upstate, right? Like most people, especially in flyover country, well, St. Louis, you can see St. Louis from a plane, so we're not flyover country. But most people in like, um, most people in like places like where I live, they think that New York is just New York City. Like you got New York, then maybe you've got Buffalo, but there's this uh, white void in between, in between. So like, what are the conditions where you all are at? Uh, if anyone wants to go, I've been talking a little bit. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll take this one since I, I travel around a bit. Um, I mean, there's a lot of rural area in New York State. It's, mm-hmm. it's believe it or not, it's one of the bread baskets of the country. Um, really, farms and corn in much of the state until you hit an urban area, whether it's Albany, Syracuse, Rochester, Buffalo. Um, there everything's kind of spread far and wide. It's hours between your typical municipal areas. Um, But once you hit a municipal area, it can get really urban really quickly. And then just as quickly become farmland again. Um, So it's not as much uh, where gun rights go to die (laughs) as as some people uh, make it. 
but it's it it's a, definitely a complex landscape as far as gun rights in general goes up upstate. It's not nearly as bad as what's in New York City. Um, I mean, there's there's a reason why New York City has its own chapter. That that whole city is a different beast unto itself when it comes to gun rights. Um, so much so that if we were one chapter, it would have to be basically one chapter, two systems. So it be it was smart for us from the beginning to have them just be two separate chapters entirely. Does somebody have a typewriter? Yeah, that was me. I have tap, 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 tap. They're kicking it old school up there in the woods, huh? Mechanical keyboards. <laughs> oh, God, you're one of those people who have an obsession with it. Yep. Hey. Well, everyone's going to have a hobby. mechanical keyboard. Oh, you've got one of those old school, like, hipster keyboards that look like a typewriter? Pretty much, but it, it responds really nice. Oh, maybe I should get one. <laughs> oh, the people that you're um, looking at here... Um, the chapter that went to the uh, That's Pittsburgh, Woodland isn't Brutality. It? We um we met with these people. They're very they're a very cool chapter, and they um they're great people. Pennsylvania for us, like traveling down to Pennsylvania, it's like a completely different world because they are very much more open with their gun laws. So Pennsylvania, us going down to there, it's like a different world. Yeah, y'all went to Pennsylvania. Hmm. I'm sorry. Do they not like that term? Uh, Pennsylvania. I, I've never heard of that term, actually. <laughs> not quite. We, we were near. We were near to Pennsylvania. That that is. That's definitely. I, I would say that's an accurate. Yeah, mo most of us, Pennsylvania is closer than going to New York City. Frankly. Yeah. 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 Plus, like yeah, New York City. New York is fucking huge. Like. It, it New is New York City. Like it's it's like I, it could New York NYC could be its own fucking state. And there are enough people that want it to be so. Well, NYC it the the city itself, the five boroughs and its metropolitan area, I mean, it has more people in it than some fucking countries, and it could probably function as like a small city state if it wanted to. Um there's there's like a small movement in upstate here to separate us from New York City. It mostly comes from a conservative mindset that if it's we get mostly a reactionary from New York movement, City, yeah. then we'll finally have Republican control of upstate and everything will be good. And it's very, very stupid because I'm pretty sure they would still be outnumbered by the liberal cities here, although I could be wrong. Yeah, like y'all got Albany, Rochester, Buffalo. Um, like... Even, even like smaller cities like Syracuse and Ithaca and shit like that. Syracuse you know. is not a small city. Nope. Syracuse, I mean, comparative to like other cities were smaller. Yeah, so I'm just looking at this thing. It's, ba it's basically like a um, it's like a uh, like a war game, right? That they went to Woodland Brutality. Yes, if you uh, if you're not familiar with InRange TV, InRange TV is um, he's pretty much openly an anarchist I think and he's one of the few gun channels on YouTube that is left wing mm -hmm. and he holds events called um, Desert Brutality, Woodland Brutality it's basically shooting competitions that include physical activity like you gotta carry this dumbbell throw it, go to the dumbbell, take a shot, hit your target then throw it again or um, carry this um, 80 pound pack on your back and um, move from position to position. It's meant to test your physicality and your um, ability to handle the gun. Um, they're they're very very interesting and fun events. Uh, something I personally would not get into, but people who want to go in the more advanced stage of maneuverability with your gun, they're definitely the things to do. Yeah, and yeah. the the SRA actually intends to send a another delegation down to I, I believe Woodland Brutality this year, and we have some of our members from the Upstate New York chapter who are going to uh, join with the Pennsylvania chapter to go to West Virginia for that Brutality That's series, right. and the the Brutality series spans the the entirety of the nation. We have. Um, Finish Brutality, which is also made in conjunction with InRange TV. 
as well as uh, desert and woodland. We had cornfield brutality. So uh, as Smedley said here, this is a really great um, sort of practical application of skills for practical shooting. Um, when we go down there, there'll, there'll be some videos up. I definitely encourage you guys to check them out. Um, but yeah, we, we did pretty well for our first showing down at Brutality. Mm. I see a lot and, of white dudes. <laughs> and um, Carl's, Carl's a great guy. Um, he's also done some collaborations with Atouche Films uh, in his videos. Um, and it's also good because he's one of the few people on guess. the left in the gun sphere on YouTube. Let me guess, Norse Pagan. Norse Pagan? I don't. I don't know to be I'm honest. Just looking at, though, I'm just looking at that. Fit. I'm looking at that patch on his shoulder. Like he had it. It looks like like basically stylized Viking writing. I <laughs> think I think it says no gods and no masters. I know yeah. that's what it says, but it's like written in that like Norse type thing. He's also um, he's also worn the um, he's, he's wearing one of the Mac patches. No, the Mac, uh, the Macnavist flag on a patch before. So yeah, he's wearing one of y'all's patches. SRA. Oh, nice. Oh jeez! Yeah. I mean, he looks and like yeah. To, yeah. to circle back what you said, there there's a, a lot of white folk at those brutality matches. Honestly, yeah. you're you're right. Um, I'm kind of I'm kind of uh, kind of uh, iffy about going around a bunch of white people with guns. <laughs> at least they're, not without cost prohibitive for sure. That uh, so, too. Uh, the tickets, I believe, are somewhere in the ballpark of about four hundred dollars, and Ooh people take these uh, very seriously. So the cost of ammunition for the, the practical shooting drills. Um, you, you you're gonna get up around a thousand dollars to get ready for one of that these opens up to uh, to get down there. like that opens up the uh, that opens up the discussion though like that's part of why like you you're not seeing black people and Latino people and uh, indigenous people like first of all like we work like I mean I got a shitload of PTO at work so I could probably swing it but like uh, if you work at the fucking Dollar Tree or at Walmart or at Schnooks Schnooks is our basically like our local grocery store I think it's like y'all's Kroger but like you're not gonna be able to afford this stuff. Like you're not gonna be able to we afford have to take, Kroger's. yeah. Um, but you're not gonna be able to afford this stuff to like go, and like even the left wing gun scene, like it's heavily white because white people are generally the only people that have privilege, especially younger white males that don't have kids, um, don't have expenses like that. They can afford to go and shoot out fucking five hundred dollars worth of ammo in the desert. You get what I'm saying? Like I yeah, could probably, absolutely. I could probably, I could probably afford to go to something like this, but like I'm relatively privileged compared to the average, um, compared to the average working class black person or a Latino person. Like I have a sit down job and I make a pretty decent amount of pay. Um, but like most people, um, shit, most, even most proletarian working class white people, yes, they exist, uh, probably wouldn't be able to hack this thing, but it's extremely important um, to do stuff like this. Like I've been a strong advocate of leftists, uh, participating in airsoft paintball, that type of thing, because it teaches tactical skills. Like how yeah. the fuck, how the fuck are you talking about protracted people's war or any other type of insurrection? And you don't even know what you're doing like that. If you, even if you don't have to, you don't have to do airsoft uh, and paintball, but like play strategy games, mountain blade, that type of thing. Mm. You were yeah, talking I, about a protracted war but that's mostly coming from the conservative side no i mean protracted people's uh, war that's how maoists think that um yeah think that revolution is going to happen no, i'm not talking about like uh boog boog shit none of that yeah yeah and even then with these boogaloo people their idea of what a civil war or a civil conflict would be is very skewed and if you get into the weeds with them it's very obvious that they have a certain idea of how things are going to go, but it's like, no, no, man. <laughs> and and to sort of circle back and to return to what you stated about these events being cost prohibitive and, and just training and, and firearms manipulation in general being cost prohibitive, you're right. And I, I think that's why the SRA has seen a an explosive increase in popularity because one, one of our key mission statements is that our goal is to provide working class people with uh, the information that they need to be effectively armed for self-defense and for community defense. And this information is, is usually um, gatekept by our, our counterparts on the right or too expensive to reach. Mm. So we host these events that, that are skill shares. If, if someone knows 
a good way to dissemble a weapon or if someone is particularly well well versed on a particular rifle um, we can share those skills in a way that you wouldn't normally be able to for working class individuals you either would have needed to enroll in a $300 one day course taught by you know some fancy war veteran or you would need to pray that you have a friend to teach you so by creating and by founding this organization the SRA really has filled that niche that you're talking about. So yeah, I, I absolutely agree. And yeah. even on like the more basic stuff, um, one of the things that um, we do a lot, or at least try to push a lot if we uh, can do, is that we have a um, intro to firearms class that um, we teach to people. Um, mm. You know, whether it be um, a certain group in an area that's interested in it, or just a bunch of random people together. We have a slideshow that we show the basics on, and then afterwards, after the class, we'd like to take them out to the range and show them the actual practicals of it and get them to shoot. And, you know, it's nothing fancy. You're not going to be showing them, like, cool, slick operator bullshit. No, you're going to be showing them <laughs> the basics. Just what's a good stance when you're holding a rifle, uh, being able to discern what calibers are which and mm. so on and so forth you know stuff to get people um down with the basics and also to introduce people who maybe were a little skeptical about skeptical about guns like they never shot before and yeah maybe they're a little afraid it's like okay well a, here's a lot a of dsa people could tell you a lot of dsa people could definitely benefit from that like just from seeing like some dsa accounts uh, on Twitter, like there's actually, there's quite a few DSA members who are also members of SRA, but, um, mm -hmm. there's also some that are like, yeah, they'll, they'll flat out say like, no, I'm not a gun guy. Some even call for gun control, but DSA kind of like SRA is a, uh, is a big 10 organization. I'm reading this uh, now in February, uh, somebody took umbrage with something that, uh, in Minnesota SRA said, apparently that's you all's tanky chapter. <laughs> But, uh, but uh, we've had some problems with them, yeah. But they've yeah. also been putting out some cool Palestine yeah. posters recently. Yeah, I've been, yeah, I they're good them. comrades. I follow them, but they said yeah. um, apparently they said something about disarming those who oppose us, which I agree with. I don't want fascists to have guns. <laughs> and they mentioned uh, Marxist calls for the terror, which are counterproductive to our aims and only feed into right wing propaganda about socialist beliefs. So. Yeah. Um, then the statement goes on to say, we are not a vanguard party or a revolutionary army. It's good that you all are saying that because organizations less qualified than yourselves believe that they are both the vanguard party and the vanguard of a revolutionary army, but they're neither. They might have one gun between like 20 of them. We are an, organi <laughs> we are an organization that seeks to provide marginalized communities and the working class with the education, the skills, and the advocates necessary to be effectively armed for self and uh, community defense. We seek, advocate for, and advance an inclusive, safe, and healthy firearms culture in America to combat the toxic right-wing and exclusionary firearm culture in place today. So those are noble goals. Um, like people immediately think that just because you have a gun that you immediately have to go out and start marching around and LARPing like your Mao come back to life. Like that's not going to happen. That's a, that's a quick way to get yourself either shot and killed or uh, go to prison forever. So yeah, it's really good that you all are promoting um, being smart with these things, taking advantage of the limited bourgeois democratic rights that the Constitution extends to us and not being a fucking idiot. Like, it's good that SRA exists because now, say you've got a 20, 21, 22-year-old kid who has access to... Um, access to his dad or his granddad's uh, firearm connection uh, collection and like instead of going out doing something incredibly stupid and making us all look bad and making us all face repression um, now they have now he has somewhere to go where he'll meet people who may be military veterans or he'll meet people um, who have experience during this type of thing to tell him like hey what you're doing that's fucking stupid let us show you how to do it the right way so uh, kudos to you all for providing that type of space yeah, you're right. And I, I also would like to highlight you're saying that it's important that we, we don't identify ourselves as, as a revolutionary or a vanguard yeah. party or, or a, a militia, because it, we we are not a militia. We are a social welfare organization, which mm. means our work is educating and advocating 
we do not provide armed security. We do not show up armed to protest under the banner of the SRA. We do not exist as some sort of immunologic response or reflex to the growing threat of far-right extremism. Hmm. We are not their other. We are not the blue in red versus blue. Really, we are at our core the, the beating heart of a diverse America, and we're just seeking self-determination and access to the same rights, the same freedoms that our right-wing counterparts enjoy, and, and that's yeah. free and unfettered access to the skills and information surrounding firearms. So I, I agree. I think it's important that we have our mission statement, have our ethos, but also understand that we're, we're not preparing for, for some you know, imaginary or soon to be whatever it is, conflict. Yeah, because like, it, like, just take, let's, let, like, let's just unpack this a bit. Like, even if y'all were, which y'all aren't, um, why would you be so stupid as to announce that publicly? Like, hey, uh, FBI, other three letter agencies, here we are. <laughs> Come get us. Yeah. We're getting ready. Yay. And like, I've seen, like, I've seen Maoists do that. Like, they write in their documents that, like, hey, we are preparing. Our ultimate goal is the initiation of our... I'm like, bro, you're fucking stupid because the only reason that the feds haven't kicked in your door yet is because they're either building a case or they don't take you seriously. Yeah. Like, that's... I mean, that's, I mean, we I mean it's certain... to take us seriously. Yeah. <laughs> that's when they start I mean, taking I mean, you seriously. For... Sorry. Go, go ahead. I didn't mean to cut you off. You're the guest here, not me. I mean, I mean, for people who are edgy and believe in, yeah, tear it all down, that's certainly a selling point, but it's not a point that's going to get you really anywhere. I mean, yeah, it's all, all it's going to do is put you on the radar of the feds, which, I mean, uh, yeah. of course, to have, to have purpose, to have motivation, to be in preparation of some imaginary conflict, it, it's great, it's wonderful, it, it's fun to have that sort of sense of purpose, but in, in reality, that doesn't help. There's a lot of work to be done, and that work is in our communities. That work is with mutual aid. That work is with disaster relief. That work is with empowering disenfranchised individuals. That work is with getting a gun in the hand of every brown person in this nation and assisting in doing so. That work is not LARPing in the woods, preparing for some conflict. I love how you said like, a gun. In, I love how you like, said a. I love how you said a gun in the hand of every brown person. Like black people, we're already good. <laughs> we love guns. Whoa, like, come in, on. That, in the that, city that's here, of... the access to firearms is relatively limited. Uh, yeah, my my peers that are in the you know black brown spectrum community, they don't have a lot of guns. And every day, I'm I'm bringing them to our instructions. I'm helping them apply for their pistol permits. An armed working class is an unsuppressible working class. Mm. And and. Oh, sorry, you go. And there. I mean, I mean, going back to the community defense, the 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 firearm is the last line of community defense. There are mm -hmm. a whole lot of things that should come before that, which include things like first aid skills, um, yeah. as you said, mutual aid, um, communication skills. That it's not just the firearm mm -hmm. that brings out the ability to keep your own community safe. That we keep us safe. I am. Um, it's yeah. not. Uh, there's an increase in popularity of um, of stop the bleed training in um, in black like working class inner city neighborhoods because like gunshot wounds unfortunately are uh, are very uh, major cause of death and serious injury in these communities. Like I've had clients mm. at, I've had clients at my shelter who have been shot up, and oh, it's in, like if there's a person on every block who is like ingrained in the community and it's like hey. Uh, Ray Ray down the street just got shot. Can you come help? Like that's far more, that's far more useful in mm -hmm. terms of bringing the community together and training a cadre of leaders than like 20 people in a mask with a gun. Like what exactly are they going to do? Like all like, okay. Um, I'm pretty sure all of us went through the like whole, uh, late 2010s upsurge in the alt-right. Like proud boys, like out on the streets, banging, fighting with them every fucking like that was how we uh, that was how we came up through the left back then, right? And I talk about it back then like it was twenty years ago, but like that was a that was an era, that was a moment, right? I'm pretty sure, pretty sure everybody has stories about that period, but like mm -hmm. the guns are a deterrent. Like there were no big, except for like a couple instances that I remember. Um, like there were no huge fucking battles. Most of the most of the fighting took place with fists and sticks and bats. Charlottesville, yeah. Yeah. 
I yeah, I've, I know a couple comrades who were at Charlottesville. Um, mm. but like, and it, and it's important. Like, and the left has like such a short memory. Like those of us who remember or have people who almost want to sh- who want to Charlottesville. Like I was in school, otherwise I would have went. But like, to Same. a lot of to a lot of these kids who are coming up, like they don't remember that shit. They don't rem- remember um, the 2016 protests against Trump in Washington D.C. They don't remember Charlottesville. They don't remember like patrolling the streets every night looking for the PBs. Like they that's that's something that they've heard about. So it's really important for those of us who actually went through that type of thing to um to sort of like provide mentorship to these people because like there's an entire generation of kids now who are coming up basically terminally online like they never they don't have any ties to actual activism in their city they just read shit and like a kid might look at some some of the stuff that's coming out of Palestine decide they want to do that here and end up doing something to get themselves and a lot of other people in trouble so it's really mm-hmm. important to provide mentorship and leadership it is, and I I really like that you said that too, because um, that that's kind of where the the direction that we come from. Um, I'm sure you've seen the Pew Research Center polls that say more than half of all gun deaths are attributed to suicide, um, mm-hmm. and I I think that's why having an, an engaged, a supportive, a diverse community of gun owners across mm-hmm. really any part of the political spectrum is is vital. It it breathes meaning into one of our major slogans of being we keep us safe. Yeah. That's a good, that's a very good slogan, by the way. Like, um, it's important to realize that if we cannot keep each other safe, we cannot never, we cannot engage in any, um, any type of, uh, any type of offensive strategy or anything like that. Because if we can't even protect ourselves, if we can't even protect our communities, then we're fucked. Yeah. This, this is just, you know, that Maslow's hierarchy of needs playing out on a national scale. You you need to know your security is guaranteed. And then we can start working towards self-actualization. We can start working towards first aid trainings. We can start working towards our goals of education, training, mutual aid. But as you said, you need to know that your your freedoms, your safety is guaranteed. And in, in this day and age, a, a good way to guarantee that or, or to safeguard that is with a firearm and the proper knowledge to handle it. You all fuck with Rev Left's radio? I was on RLR like a few years ago. He's a good guy. Uh, yeah, I'm uh, pretty sure we follow them. Yeah, We've retweeted guy. them, that's for sure. Yeah, maybe you should go on his show next. He's a good guy. If um, you get in contact with him, um, wouldn't be bad. Yeah, since you all are the terminally online branch. Also, hey, okay, whatever. I can contact y'all, should, them. y'all shouldn't have posted this. This this gives me the creeps. I had a nightmare about this last night. I don't need to see <laughs> sure. oh I don't need goodness. to see well, I don't need, need to, to see. see you need to see what it's in reference to. Um it's in reference to the fucking um the statue of Robert E. Lee from Charlottesville getting melted down. Oh yeah. I tweeted was, out saying it's the yeah. only fitting end for that piece of junk. Yeah, some dude was mad about that. Like, oh you're destroying our culture and heritage. Yeah, Robert yeah, Rob, Robert E. Lee, uh, like <laughs> Robert E. Lee didn't even I'm no slave. Oh Lord, the journey of that fuck. First of all, he did. I, I know you're like straw manning the guy there, but I hate these fucking arguments so much. He didn't even uh, own no slaves. He did. He I didn't even own no slaves. All the all them black folks worked for him because they loved him so much. <laughs> oh, Moss Robert, he loved station there. What's that? I was actually I was actually stationed in Albany, Georgia. Oh yeah, oh. my brother, uh, my brother was down there, or something similar. So I can tell you from just those that year also, plus also, that I lived there that they literally do believe everything that you guys are saying. Also, mm-hmm. it's not Albany; it's Albany. That's uh, Martin Luther King actually got into a, quite a bit of trouble there. Like he he was so frustrated in Albany. They had this police chief down there, Laurie Pritchard. Who um who actually studied King? He was a bit smarter than the average uh than the average person whose neck is sunburned. Um, so he studied him. He was like, yeah. So this guy he wants us to basically beat the fuck out of him because that gets him sympathy. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to treat him nicely. We're still racist as fuck, but we're going to treat him nicely. We're going to gingerly put him in the police car and gingerly put him in jail. They'll be beating on him, Cletus. Um, and, uh, like desegregation in Albany was delayed for like two or three years. And Martin Luther King was pissed. He was like, these motherfuckers. Jesus. But, yeah. They were the smarter racists. Yeah. Zenith in the chat said, correct me if I'm wrong, but the Black Panther Party initially began under the name the Black Panther Party for Self-Defense. Yes, that is the case. Is it, self, is it child abuse to name your child Cletus? Yes, it is. Uh, <laughs> yes. They, ru they, ruined, they ruined a perfectly good Roman name. Do people pay fees Warburgs. to join these guys? That's a Roman name? Jesus Christ. Yeah, it's uh, Latin. Do people pay fees oh. to join these gun clubs? Um, you mean the SRA specifically? Or? Yes. Yes, there yes. are membership dues associated. You can choose what type of due you pay. Um, I think we have an, an annual option, which is somewhere Let in the me, ballpark uh, of $35 a year, and then we have a monthly option. The difference between the two, the monthly being about $5, I believe. Uh, again, the difference between the two is that the annual option, approximately 70% of that goes to the overhead of operating national, whereas a much higher percentage goes to your individual chapter if you're choosing the monthly um, payout for your dues. And it should also be mentioned that there is an option for a dues waiver. There is, absolutely. So, yeah. Communists are always looking for free shit. I'm so sick of it. Uh, Triad, North Carolina. That's a good uh, chapter right there. Oh, yeah? Are you yeah, there a, are certain... I think you all have a chapter in, uh, in STL. It's, it's pretty small. Yeah, I think we have a small one down there. In St. Louis, you mean? or Yes, Saint STL means St. Louis. Okay, well, uh, on the website, there is a map of the country where you click on the um, state and it shows you the um, chapters there. Um, it's at the very bottom of the page if you want to go. And um, the St. Louis one, I checked there. I think it's still active. Oh, um, I'm on their y Twitter has been deactivated, but... um. That could have the, just been banned. I'm on the blog. Yeah, it takes you to there. Mm -hmm. We're going to have an article up there about uh, a certain law that got passed in our state. Uh, so, yeah, at the bottom there are local chapters. And you just click on whatever state and... No, what did they do? They must have said something to get to get banned off of, off of Twitter. It's kind oh. of... Yep, this they Kansas, probably got ganked. Kansas State. Hey, I still. This is a pretty logo though. It's got the arch and it's got three bullets. Yeah, uh, the locals do their best to. Um, well, the individual branches do their best to um, individualize themselves. I made our chapter logo for that reason. Hmm. Armed hipsters. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm pretty sure these are very nice people. Mm -hmm. But uh, this is cool. Um, <clears throat> this I remember, oh, someone else in the chat said, King of Town 247. There's also a large first aid aspect to the SRA that's vital. Yes. Like we said um, beforehand, there's been an uptick in stop the bleed stuff and we definitely recommend almost every person who joins the chapter to take a stop the bleed week, class um and um we're trying to find I mean, a good um a older... source to buy ifax for our chapter just to give them out to people and i have my own one that i've made but you know if you're in the chapter and you don't have one it'd be good to get one from us IFAC stands for Individual First Aid Kit, by the way. Yes. Yes. So, yes. The, the contents tend to be um, basically the essentials that you would need for bleeding control, stuff like tourniquet, uh, compacted gauze, stuff like that. And that's meant to be yeah. used on. That's meant to be used on you, right? It it could be used on an individual. It also can be taken from that individual in a triage situation to be used on other individuals. Sometimes they contain um, rubber tourniquets that can be cut and multiplied. Uh, also, it, it's important to say the the Stop the Bleed courses, um, we do a lot of work with the Rochester Street Medic Collective, and the courses that they host, they actually get donations um, from, I, I'm un, unsure of the, the sources, 
but they provide what they refer to as Stop the Bleed kits. Now those are available on Stop the Bleed's website, but they tend to be a little bit expensive. So getting these for free at the, the, the point of course instruction, at the point of delivery, that's awesome. You get yeah. yourself a cat tourniquet, you get yourself a Sharpie, gloves, Raptor scissors uh, to cut through clothing or, or whatever you need, some compact Z folded gauze. Um, I believe they also in started including Israeli combat um, trauma gauze bandages. And Israeli and combat? In a, I don't want Israeli uh, anything. <laughs> it, it's a common name for an even more common piece of medical equipment. I, I'm uncertain if they, I'm, I'm assuming they, they pioneered it if it bears their name, but. Um, were you in a pinch? It can apply pressure, and it also has hemostatic clotting agents as well. It, it should be also noted that if you are going to make a IFAC for yourself, don't cheap out on basically anything. Don't, especially, do not buy tourniquets from like Amazon because there will be some Amazon vendors that have good tourniquets, but they're also mixed in with like cheap ass tourniquets that can fail on you. So, if you're ever going to buy stuff for an IFAC kit or just a pre made IFAC kit, buy it from a reputable source, um, groups that make them so on and so forth, especially tourniquets. Get tourniquets from reputable sources because if you are in a situation where um, you have a massive wound that you've applied a tourniquet to, you do not want that thing failing because it can yeah. be catastrophic. Yeah, you don't want somebody no, just keep putting rapid what's the equivalent of of spicy toilet paper around you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you're, you would essentially be just doing the same if you took your belt off and just pulled tight. So yeah, we got and also interview. just as a shameless right. plug, M2 two-inch ratcheting medical tourniquet. If you have, uh, you don't have like if you're slight of frame or, or strength, those ratchets can really help out. And we're looking to get some of those distributed for stop the bleed courses as well. Nice. We also um we also have a bunch of just like um uh, gun locks in general that we like to hand out to people who need them. You know, those are pretty cheap and. It's always good to give them to people who need, you know, usual right. gun safety so stuff. Not what you might call a typical one. Oh my God, white dreads guy. Why? <laughs> oh, are you looking at the advertisement on your thing? No, I'm looking at the fucking this how America's oh, okay. yeah. how America's left is preparing for escalating violence, and what greets my eyes, what darkens my door than the sight of a <laughs> than the sight of a white person in, with. M mats. I'm not even going to call those dreads. Those are mats. Anyways, let's Sa see what... Sadly, I'm watching a fucking ad on your channel right mm -hmm. now. He isn't a police officer. Uh. He's not in the military, and he doesn't vote Republican. He's a member of the Socialist... Oh, cargo shorts and vans. I've rocked that fit before. I haven't rocked the white dreads before, though. Rifle Association. <laughs> and he knows his politics may be a bit white. out of place here at this rural <laughs> shooting range in Maryland. It's kind of hard to do if you don't have hair. When he talks that about too. the training he offers, have you he ever lowers considered wearing voice. a toupee? So for <laughs> have you ever considered going to go fuck yourself? <laughs> That's his suggestion. Wear a toupee to get white dreads. Um, That's queer. <laughs> but clothing has not been invented yet, and even then, even I wouldn't want to fuck myself. You could always pull guy. off a Joe Dirt. <laughs> no, I'm God. pretty sure. No, I'm I'm sure the clean shave is good enough for me. No teaching today. I just had a mustache target practice for a while, and I was SRA like, member okay, Eric, I've to keep with this. Time to go back in to the clean shaven. Lot, a prejudice is confirmed. A bumper sticker with an anti trans slur. Lib T or tranny? Lib it T. L I B E T Y. Oh. Like I keep saying, the average American reactionary has the spelling and reading skills oh, of a third God. grader. Oh, God. Yeah, that's just unfortunate there. Uh oh my god, I haven't seen this fit on anybody since like fifth grade. Oh, he's rocking that Guy Fieri fit. Yep. <laughs> when I was in like fifth grade, like 03, 04, like everybody had those cheap polyester. Either they had like a dragon on them or they had those flames on them. Mm. Trans people have uh, that's what you could all, that's the only thing that you could buy at Hot Topic. The Socialist Rifle Association. Was I was always weird growing up with how I dressed. I always dressed like I was fucking 50 members. or something. Just slacks, polos, or button-ups. They say they're nothing like a right-wing. 
Were you raised in a very, very hard shell traditionalist Baptist church? No, I'm from a pretty liberal Catholic family. You have in common. Liberal Catholic family. Liberal Catholic Is Italian. That guns will make them Mamma mia, that's a Mamma spicy mia. meatball. Hey, look, man, there's nothing like eating some Italian food and listening to Dean Martin, all right? It's a vibe. I'm quite familiar with the Rat Pack. So I bought my... Um... I bought my first gun. Uh, it was a shotgun. Uh, ten days. Wax. Days after January. This actually looks like a pretty cool group to hang out with, but I would definitely cut white dread dudes' drapes <laughs> off. <laughs> yeah, we met recent. with uh, a bunch of these members, and uh, they're anyway, they're cool folk. I was they're uh, you know. Yeah, this is the Maryland uh, chapter. An armed militia. Maryland. I should mention that did like, not include. My child dude. is non-binary. They hear me say they <laughs> them or whatever, the and you know, so they just. I believe they have a crab on their logo because Maryland. And mm. I sort of recently came out as trans, and both of those aspects of my identity um, put me at like a higher risk for political violence. When you hear about it so much, it feels like sooner or later it'll get to you. And you don't want to be in a position where you don't see it coming. Perhaps surprisingly, there aren't any weapons at the picnic. And the, the individual on the screen in the, the pink shirt here, we actually had the opportunity to run a two-gun competition with her. Okay. Um, who won? Very, very kind. Um, who did one? I believe it was a member from the Pittsburgh the SRA that the ended up taking home the title for our rifle and um, pistol challenge. Nice. Makes you completely invincible. In the U.S., an overwhelming majority of those who lean left politically. I sat out that challenge. It was just too hey, damn. Look. Oh, yeah, there's hey, the look. logo. Hey, look, I think this is the one black guy. I found him. Less than half as likely. He's, where, he's rocking the red, band, um, right. the red beret like Sankara. Yeah, I found the one black guy. But at this public outreach event in a park in Washington, D.C., the socialist rifle... Washington, D.C., that's why they had a black guy come. <laughs> ...association <laughs> on one of their finds an audience there. for its message that there's an arms race in this We're country. We're planning to do like more stuff not, like this, right like just tabling outside places and talking. Yeah. Just I've suggested... A, oh. Just from, just from, like, from what I've seen of, your, of the uh, photographs of your membership like i'm not trying to be funny or anything but like y'all definitely need to like diversify your membership like uh like just from the um from the maryland branch alone like just looking at that like you've got to do with white dread with dreads walking around if there were actually if there were black people in that chapter that wouldn't have been allowed mm. so yeah, yeah and that, that, that is a consistent issue that that the org has in general is is diversity <clears throat> it's something because not only that, like black people have our own, like have our own gun things. Like we have the Huey P. Mm -hmm. Newton Gun Club Alpha. Um, we have the Black Women's Self Defense League. Like we have our own gun clubs. So like I, I don't I don't know how um, radical it is, but there is also the National African American Gun Rights Association. They're conservative, yeah, relatively. Yeah, they're more center conservative folks. Yeah, but like, and then like, America is still like extremely segregated. Like, um, mm -hmm. like if I, maybe you all should like consider like maybe collaborating or maybe helping to, um, helping to fund a, a Huey P. Newton chapter to go to one of those, uh, one of those events, one of those trainings. Um, mm. but just just in keeping in line with you all's uh, very good stated value of providing. Um, providing training and assistance to colonized people, like maybe, like some black people will never be a, never be comfortable joining a group that's majority white. Um, so maybe you should work with like what already exists and mm. build ties that way. Like we talk about Fred Hampton, right? Like Fred Hampton didn't because the Black Panther Party was an all black formation. Mm -hmm. Stokely Carmichael, aka Kwame Ture, was like, okay, yeah, we gotta. Like white people have to organize other white people because when you come to our communities, it unleashes a whole bunch of psychological bullshit. You get what I'm saying? 
uh, the black people are probably going to end up having an inferiority complex and the white people are going to end up having an inferiority complex as well. So it's not going to be good for anybody. Am I advocating segregation of the left? No. But we also have to keep in mind that we're coming from two radically different things. So when Fred Hampton organized the, um, the Rainbow Coalition, everybody maintained their autonomy. But they got together and they worked on things that impacted the Puerto Rican community, the poor white Appalachian community, the black mm-hmm. community, and every other community that was uh, that was oppressed and exploited. So just something to consider, just from somebody, yeah, no. just from somebody that's like spent years studying black history. Um, you're you're right, and I I think our organization is still in its its nascency, so to speak. We. 2018 was sort of our, our founding here, October of 2018. Granted, mm-hmm. we were technically founded much earlier. You all uh, came out however, of that. You all came out of that whole uh, Dave Strano thing, right? The what? The uh, uh, John Brown Gun Club Redneck Revolt. Um. Well, I I have a little bit more info on the history. The SRA kind of existed in in kind of a joke form on like Facebook like um pages it wasn't until 2018 that people decided okay let's actually try and do something here and made it into an official group as for the connections to like redneck revolt um we never had any official connections to redneck revolt and john brown gun clubs are basically um independently organized redneck revolt fell apart through internal because um, Dave, because Dave Strano was a piece of shit. He was the leader of Redneck Revolt. Yeah, I heard stories about him being a sh- shithead. Uh yeah, a major piece of shit. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, for as noble as Redneck Revolt was, when you have bad leadership like that, it's bound to happen. I mean, it obviously has bad leadership if they're, if they're walking around with a stupid name like that. <laughs> I mean, Red- trying to reclaim the term redneck, it's like, okay, it's do you, do you all know what the term? Gone. Do you all know where the term came from? Like, people, um, think, people think that it came from Blair Mountain. It didn't. You know how I know that it didn't come from Blair Mountain? Because in Barbados, um, okay, back in history a bit, Cromwell sent a bunch of, uh, of Irish indentured servants because Cromwell wanted to subdue Ireland, right? So he sent, mm-hmm. a, bunch of Ir- he sent a bunch of Irish people to, uh, to Barbados. And the black Barbagians uh, called them rednecks, icky becky, poor white mm. mice, a lot of names. Um, on the plantation, that's what we called the overseer because y'all burn in the sun. Well, maybe not you because you're Italian. But um, <laughs> but like the Brits oh, and um, in South Africa, the Boers actually called English descendants South Africa's Ruenecha, which basically oh, means God. yeah, rednecks. So it's not a Blair Mountain thing. Um, mm. It's a sunburn thing. And it, it always kills me when I hear like when I hear pale people trying to reclaim that term. I mean, it pertains to y'all. If you all want to give it a revolutionary history or proudly identify as it, I mean, that's y'all. But like, I, I, I don't knowing think knowing that. this now, it kind of reminds me of um, the OG Rainbow Coalition with the Patriot Party trying to reclaim the Confederate flag as like oh, yeah. a symbol of lo- se- uh, like Southern rebellion and shit. Well, that was and the then, young. That was the young Patriots. The uh, the young Patriots. Yeah, yes, the Patriot And then Party. the Black Panthers basically said, "Hey, can you like not?" And they got well, rid of it after a while. No, the Black Panthers. They didn't say, "Hey, can you not?" Like especially the Chicago chapter. The Chicago chapter would just show up and kick the shit out of you. That's yeah. how they got rid of the Confederate flag. Fred Hampton's boys threw down. <laughs> okay. It's always weird seeing those fucking pictures with the shot. Panthers and the Young Patriot Party members where they had, like, the Confederate flag on patches on their shirts or the really famous photo where it has the two free Huey Newton flags and um, then the fucking Confederate battle flag in the middle. It's like, yeah. what ideology is this? What mm. alternate history is this? Whatever it is, it probably had quite a bit of uh, marijuana consumption involved in its creation. I mean, it's the 60s and 70s. That's just a given, man. Yeah. yeah. So each branch, why does Austin have a bunch of bats? I Are, don't know what Austin- bats pertain to Austin, to be honest. And look, Houston has three rockets. Yeah, because that's where Houston Rocket Command yeah. is. Yeah, Space City. You got Corpus San Antonio. 
Remember, Austin City motto is stay weird. Yeah, well, stay weird. Oh, L.A. He's pretty cool. DSA does a similar thing. Like every DSA chapter has its um. Well, I'll be sure not to go to Austin. Then I'm afraid of bats. Own um, specific logo. Yeah. Yeah. DSA kind of has a thing. San Diego has a has a dog. San Francisco. Yeah. In term. San Francisco Bay hey. has a. The Bay has a bear. Is that a tribute to the city's very large Castro queer community? I'm no. pretty sure it's just a reference it's... to the California flag, which is funny considering the bear on that flag technically is extinct. Oh, uh, yeah. Hmm, I wonder who helped make it extinct. Oh, South Florida. Hey, look, Black Panthers. In Northeast Florida, an alligator with an AK. And Tallahassee, a big picture of the state capital. Georgia. Yep. Peach, Flint River, no Atlanta, I've noticed. Yeah, there are some states. Oh, and just to say this out to here, if there are people who are listening now or people listening later, um, if your state or region doesn't have a chapter, uh, don't fret. If you have some friends with you, you can get in contact with the national organization and go through the process of forming a chapter yourself um, if you are so inclined to do so. Um We'd like to fill out every part on, you know, the map, of course. We even have, um, there's no chapter in uh, Hawaii, I believe. There is a chapter in Alaska. Um, Ooh, chilly. Anchorage. Ch yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's yeah. the Anchorage chapter. But yeah, just going through the south, um, there's none in Louisiana, none in Mississippi. There's northeast Alabama. There's yeah. North Georgia and Flint River. Uh, South Carolina, there's Upstate, uh, there's Asheville, Charlotte, uh, you got the Triad, and the Research Triangle, uh, Tennessee, none in, I mean, Kentucky, there's none in Kentucky, there's Tennessee that encompasses the whole state, Arkansas encompasses the whole state, there's none in West Virginia, so yeah, you all definitely look like, it looks like you already start hitting these southern states, like, hard. Yeah, that's a problem, because even if we have members down there, some of them are just a little too dislocated and so on and so forth. But really, um, you got to get in contact, have networks and so on, and then create the chapter there. Um, yeah, we're we're making headway slowly. And, yeah. and awesome. it's the same thing with um, diversity w within the SRA. Uh, like I said, we're, we're young. We're attracting individuals with disposable income, disposable time, but the hope is through outreach like this and by creating these connections, we're going to be able to <laughs> proliferate meaningfully. Look, we're we're look, going to be able to find new chapters. Look oh, at yeah, the Las Vegas one is great. Yeah, they got a Tommy gun. Las Vegas was literally founded by a mob, so they know their history. Yeah, Bugsy <laughs> Siegel, he's the one who founded that fucking town. Bugsy God Siegel would be... So Bugsy Siegel, I guess, is a uh, is an honorary member of Las Vegas SRA. <laughs> Well, he he was fucking assassinated before he got to see what it became. Yeah, of he was uh, he was assassinated by the uh, by the CIA. That's what Douglas Valentine believes. Because like the yeah, mob, it's still deba it's still debatable on who pulled the trigger. To like be the honest. mob, and like it's compelling because like the mob when the mob killed you back in the day, like they would just literally riddle your house. Bugsy yeah. got Bugsy got two in the head from a rifle. Uh, so mm. that's how the CIA kills people. That's not how the mob killed people. And not Quite to mention, also, if they're really mad at you, they fucking bury you and make sure that your family never finds you in a lot of cases, especially when they were in um, Las Vegas. Many holes in that desert, and a lot of those holes were filled. Yeah, so just going through... Uh... And, and also, even though it's not labeled here, there is a Canadian SRA, but it's technically independent of um, this group. We're, I, I'm in contact with members from it, and uh, they're cool people. Um, and just to give kind of like an idea of um, some stuff, I, we have calls from all across um, here for um, for um, classes for our uh, intro to firearms class. I've even gotten contacted by a person from Vermont who is interested in attending a class. So it's definitely there. Um Okay. We just so. need um, places to essentially show it, and that can be sometimes a problem. It's like, hey, 
we're all part of this uh, group here. Can we use these facilities to just teach people? It's like, huh. Hmm. So let's see. Um, qualifications for membership in the Socialist Rifle Association. You can be denied for not being a resident of the United States, hence your Canadian branch being independent. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you're a minor. Uh, minors have no business playing with guns. You need to go do your homework. An application, yes. <laughs> an application may be denied on the following character grounds. So they can SRA can deny you because you possess a recent and relevant history of expressing sympathy or support for fascism, neo confederatism, or other reactionary ideologies. If you actively participate in exclusionary social ideologies, such as but not limited to racism sexism, homophobia, transphobia, ableism, or religious discrimination. So no MAGA communists and no Pat Sox. Yeah, um, we're better off without them. Yeah, nobody needs them. Who needs them? They are currently employed in a volunteer paid capacity as any manner of law enforcement officer who has the powers of arrest in their jurisdiction. So no cops, no uh, corrections officers. I guess, mm -hmm. uh, I guess security, just security officers will be okay because security officers can't arrest people. Um, would we allow Paul Blarts into our group if they wanted to? <laughs> we, we will allow anyone who seeks the knowledge we can provide who isn't an absolute fascist. So I, I would say Paul Blart would be quite welcome so long as he could hang. Yeah. I mean, if you're a mall cop who's just trying to get by and all your days are just spent walking around the mall, unless you have a superiority conflict uh, con like complex about yourself, Sure, whatever you can join. Put the popcorn down, son. Son, son, you're talking too loud here. You gotta put that down, okay? Look, I'm gonna bring out my taser right here. All right, you're scaring mall, me. Mall cops don't even carry tasers. <laughs> okay, look, I, I'm bringing out my club. I don't even know if they can. Carry uh, no, they That's just give right. me a stern talking. I challenge you. I challenge That's you right. to fish the cuffs. That's it. <laughs> That's it. I'm calling the police. Oh, Lord. I they mean, have look, if you gotta, you got to make your living, you got to make your living. But just don't be surprised if you take your job way too seriously and people start making fun of you. You couldn't crack fucking boot camp or um, cop school, which, <laughs> I mean, damn. It's called the police academy. Cops, yeah, <laughs> they have expressed care, I don't care. they have expressed clear intent to cause harm to the name or structure of the organization. So no entry as types and no records. Like I imagine, you've probably got a couple Maoist or pseudo Maoist types who basically want to join, take over the organization, and I guess I don't know, use y'all as some type of private militia or something, <laughs> which would be funny. Thankfully, as fuck. we've not had that. Yeah, I would want to fuck with them. I wouldn't want to fuck with a. I wouldn't want to fuck with the group that literally has rifle in its name. But some people are very dumb. <laughs> they have been expelled from other sympathetic or otherwise leftist organizations for character-based charges. So basically, don't be a dick. So more uh, bureaucratic stuff. So yeah, very... being on the uh, assembly, you get used to a lot of the bureaucratic um, stuff here. We're um, updating. We we're always constantly updating our bylaws and stuff if it needs to change. So, yeah, all members are expected to comply with the following standards of conduct: uh, no participating in harassment campaigns, threats of violence, or derogatory behavior; no advocating for illegal actions or activities of any kind; no working to intentionally or actively undermine the organization; no participation in organization that advocate or promote fascism, Nazism, or neo-confederatism. No sexual offense to include the intentional use of inappropriate sexual language, sexual behavior, sexual harassment, and assault. And no domestic abuse, assault, violence, or other domestic offense. So, no fuckboys. Yep. yep. In essence. It's neat. It's very long. But, yeah... Resolutions on yeah, policy. We, we try to legitimize this as, as much as we are able to while while keeping with, um, as, as you stated, some of our members espouse, you know, anarchist or, or more socialist views. So we, we don't want a top heavy organization. We don't want an organization where there's someone telling you what to do, think, feel and be around every corner. 
but we also want to codify common sense rules. We have yeah. a welfare committee. Should a member stand accused of anything or if there's unsavory conduct, um, they they receive an, an impartial hearing and they may or may not be expelled from the organization or subject to disciplinary action as the chapter sees fit or national, that is. But we we, we try to keep things as, as tight as we can here regarding rules. Okay. That's neat. That seems to be a very well-organized... Uh... Very well organized group, and that's the concept, at least. Ooh. Yeah, <laughs> Ooh, I all like the this. structure is. Oh, yeah, like all this. the. Yeah, we have some merch. Sadly, a lot of the stuff is, um, not for sale right now because <clears throat> it's out of um stock. Yeah, that's one of the um lighters I had that I was uh flicking around. Uh, I'm going to order that when I get paid. They're um. They're made by, um, and I'm going to give a shout out to them because they're a great um, company. Um, I believe they're made by a company called Off Color Decals. Um, they're a left wing, um, you know, shop. You can find them on Etsy and their own website. They make um, koozies, um, lighter engravings, stickers, shirts. Um, they made our uh, chapter patches for us. Um, we got them union made, of course, because we're not scabs. Um, and they're just cool people. They're very good. If you want to buy some left wing swag, you should definitely check them out. And they make, I'm pretty sure they make all of the stuff for the SRA um, merch shop. That's neat. So, yeah. Obviously, you all are opposed to uh, gun control. I also like the angles quote, by the way. Um, what is genuine is proved in the fire. What is false, we shall not miss in our ranks. Sort of like better, fewer, but better. Mm -hmm. um, yep. That was from Lennon. But um, so we all know that gun control is bad. But like, how how would you respond to somebody who says, like, somebody that's been say traumatized by gun violence? Um, because like, we can't just be like, oh, you're you're a wimp. You need to toughen up because that's cruel. That's not how you talk to the masses. That's not how you get mm -hmm. people to. That's not how you get people to be on your side, right? So, like, yeah. how, how do we, how do we deal with the fact that many people have like very real concerns about the continued proliferation of, uh, of firearms, and the fact that many firearms, for example, we just had a huge mass shooting; almost twenty people were killed in uh in Maine. So we have to take into account that like people have very legitimate reasons for not wanting to continue proliferation of firearms in their communities. But we also have to keep in mind that we're not dumb. If there is to be a revolution, a radical restructuring of the order that we live under, um, it's not going to be entirely peaceful. But how can we do that without being LARPers, so? Or see it coming off as callous assholes? Well, I mean, yeah. the, the way that I usually uh, address that is through material conditions. Mm -hmm. You have the, these conditions that cause the rise of this violent person, whether it was in this most recent case that they were a veteran, a combat veteran yeah. who had seen shit, came back, were, was ignored by the military despite repeated issues. Mm-hmm. And, and was given consistent access to weaponry despite showing mental instability that makes them a danger to themselves, a danger to their community, and basically mm -hmm. everyone around them, that, that's around them. So it would be better to focus on what gave, gives rise to violence because mm -hmm. violence will take place no matter what, like what you said earlier, it, whether it's knives, whether it's guns, whether it's improvised explosives. Yeah. But if you if you address the material conditions of the people that are causing violence, it's going to do a lot more. And, and there are numerous studies that back this up than banning an AR 15. Yeah. I look at it um, this way, like um, China under um, during the socialist period, some people think, think China is still socialist. I'm a Maoist. I don't, but like when Mao was running shit, like when China could still be said to have been on the uh, socialist road, so to speak. Right. Um, there were militias in like every village, every town, every city. Um, they did militia training because they were constantly afraid they were going to be evaded by the Soviet Union. 
Um, and there were no reports of mass shootings. Why? Because the conditions um, were radically different than this capitalist dystopia in which we live, right? Um, you had free education. Like you read about somebody that snapped or you're watching your news and you see where somebody snapped. Chances are, if they're not like just crazy, they've, uh, they're going through financial stress, right? They're going through, um, they're going through something that could be directly attributed to, uh, to capitalism. The fact that we live yeah. in a capitalist yep. imperialist society that doesn't give a fuck about working people. Um, so under socialism, when the people are in charge, the people take measures that are good for their well being, right? Like if there's a person in the community who's known to, um, who is known to be a happy person and then they suddenly just start like they wall themselves off from people. They don't show up to work or uh, collective tasks or study or anything. The people, their neighbors intervene and they're like, Hey, what's up? Can we help you? How can we help you? And they will literally like, they will literally make you better in a, uh, in a compassionate way. But here they just refer you to a psychiatrist and they load you up with drugs that may or may not help your condition. Mm. And they don't change the stressor behind what's causing the condition. Exactly. It, are you working too much? Do you have not enough support when you're raising your children? There are so many other ways that we can address this other than take, taking it away and making it so that only cops have access to this sort of thing. Yeah. Only, yeah. Only cops are right wingers. Like, um, like here in our, our state, um, the governing like body of laws that dictate gun laws in this state is called the NY safe act. Uh -huh. And um, all those laws don't basically don't apply to uh, cops and former cops because of course they wouldn't. It's not gonna, they're going to want their own uh, stipulation. They're saying, no, we yep. get to keep our 30 round magazines and our non-compliant rifles. And the thing and is, the same those... thing applies to the red flag laws too. Yep. Mm-hmm. And the thing is, like, cops, uh, for one, cops are notoriously, like, people, for whatever stupid reason, I don't know if they've never interacted with the cop, but cops have go through mental illnesses, too. These people take drugs and alcohol all day long. Oh, no, like, of course. And not only that, but they have, uh, they have families. They have kids who may not be the most stable. So it's easy to break in the daddy's gun safe or shit. Daddy is so stupid, he leaves his gun out on a nightstand. Or he has it on a rack over the fireplace. So it's easy. Okay, let's grab this and go go do something stupid with it. So that is, That's, uh, that uh, is dumb. That reminds me of a story. He wasn't a cop, but um, he was a literal neo-Nazi. His name was uh, Jeff Hall. He was the leader of the National Socialist Movement. I heard and, his, um, his, he was killed by his kid. <laughs> yes, his son who was abused and not treated well. His son took out um, his father's revolver, which he just had laying around because of course he did. And he shot him at point blank range. And have um, you, uh, have I you think read? He's, I think he just recently got out of prison after like 10 yeah. years. There's a good book about like people like that. Uh, it's written by a guy named Vegas Tenold. He's Norwegian. Uh, Everything you love will burn. Oh, I've heard of that before. Didn't he like hang around a bunch of those like far right members during like the old right period? Yeah, like, he hanged around like uh, Matthew Heimbeck a lot. It's awesome. Like if I could get him on this stream, I would be happy as fuck. But yeah, you all. Yeah, I remember. Um, I remember hearing that book from a um an episode of uh, Behind the Bastards podcast. Yeah, you got to read it. It's really good. But uh, I'll but, yeah. definitely. If I, I think can get a copy. Jeff Shape. Jeff Shope, I think his name. No. Scoop. Scoop. Yeah, he's te he's technically left the movement now. Oh um, uh, yeah. He uh he pals around. I think uh he kicked I think Matt Heinbach kicked him out of the group that he founded. And then Matt Heinbach got kicked it out because they thought Mike he Matt Heinbach was a communist. He identifies Which he technically is now. He's a national Bolshevik. He that's not a communist, that's a Strasserite. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, uh, well, Matt, well, Matt Heimbeck got kicked out of his own group because he had an affair with his mother-in-law. The night who, of the, um, the, the night of the three, the night of the two wives. Night of the <laughs> wrong wives. Um, then he sadly beat his wife in front of his children. Bad. Stop. He's a fucking fascist. Of course he did. And overnight, the traditionalist workers' party fucking liquidated. And then he joined the National Socialist Movement to try and help it become more of a serious group. 
Uh, but then they kicked him out for quote unquote being a communist, aka being a stress. I, yeah, I remember when that that uh, it was all over Twitter. Like they basically denounced each other. Like first yeah. is, first is tragedy, second is farce. Yeah, and then he like reformed, saying he's not a racist anymore. And now he's come back. He was at that uh, Rage Against the War machine with a group called the. You know, I'm not even going to name the group because they don't deserve it, but they're just fucking stressorist. And he's trying his damnedest to be relevant. Like they were flying the Soviet flag and the Imperial Russian flag together. Very fucking funny. Good yeah, ideology. But see, they, yeah, like they only attract morons. Like, I don't know if you all saw my like, I don't know if you all saw my like back and forth with Yankee Tanky, a.k.a. Joey Shots over the past couple days. It's so hard to watch but, anything but like, with him in it. But like. They only attract people like that. They only attract people who are lost, people who like people who really don't have their heads screwed on all that well in the first place. Like who the fuck I, would look at some somebody like that or Matt Heinbach or Jackson Hinkle or any of these other morons and like take yeah, this is a political leader leader that I want to follow. I mean, Heinbach set himself up in a way different to a lot of the other leaders at the time where he seemed friendly or whatever and more personable but at the end of the day he was just like any of these other megalomaniac people he wanted to be the leader of a movement and yeah in the end he showed his true colors he's a fucking cheater and a person who doesn't respect women of course and just yeah. a fucking nazi and most of these people end up being horrible organizers in the first place like it's all there's no substance behind what they're doing like when you read their documents they're basically illegible they contradict themselves like every other sentence like it, one thing i'll give the old school guys like the like they actually were because most of these people especially in italy the italian ones like they came out of the socialist movement so they knew how to organize mm -hmm. but like they're great grandchildren like these people are fucking they don't know what the fuck they're doing <laughs> yeah like, i mean I, like that i don't i don't even think the new generation of fascists even even read the ogs like they used to <laughs> i mean there's small subsects like when iron march was still around iron mm -hmm. march people were i would say more well read than the typical skinhead who would usually just read like I don't know, George Lincoln Rockwell books yeah. and the Turner Diaries. Like these people yeah. are reading like Savitri Devry in this bullshit. Yeah. But uh, Julius Evola, all that type of shit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, recently, I mean, the biggest fascist group in the country right now and the most active one is Patriot Front. Mm -hmm. And through the internal dialogue that we know that was uh, leaked by, I believe, Unicorn Riot, they're kind of stuck uh, in terms of membership at like, the 280 slash 300 mark and they're like struggling to grow yeah, so that's they why have to I, like, bunch up people from around the country to go and march in cities yeah. to look like they're big and that's what um that's actually what the uh what the gonzaloites used to do the red guards yes like people used to like look at all these marches and they'd be like wow they're really big like no like when you read the documents i know you have um when you read mm -hmm. the documents from people who left that cult they're like, no, they made us basically. They picked us up in the middle of the night and they drove us to Austin. They forced us to work to make these banners. We're up painting banners at three o'clock in the morning. And then we get up, we go to the march, bone tired. Then we get a police kettle. And like they would literally work, try to get their people arrested so that they could make a bail fund so that and um, they played it up like they were decent propagandists, but they prayed it up. Yeah. You get, you get 15,000 in the bail fund. Now keep in mind, anybody that's been around the movement a while knows that, especially in a leftist city like Austin, there's already a bail fund, right? But the red guards had pissed so many people off. They couldn't use the regular bail fund. So <laughs> you got 20,000, you got 20,000 bucks and your shit. Not all that shit is going for bail. So yeah. they were basically just scamming the shit out of these stupid ass people with rich parents on the internet, sending them 500 and a thousand dollars along with Gonzalo quotes. And mm. that's what a Patriot front does the same thing. Like there's no yeah. way like Washington, DC, a black city. You've got 300 white dudes marching. Like, no. It wasn't even three. It wasn't even three hundred. It was like around one hundred and fifty. Mm -hmm. um, Patriot Front, especially, yeah, all that rings true for Patriot Front. Like they, Thomas Rousseau, who's the leader of it, he has basically created a regime in that group where if you don't do activism, you're gonna get your ass kicked out. So you better be making fucking um, banners or going yeah. out and putting up stickers. You better if you're in this region, like. 
there is a member who um, tried to get out of marching at DC because his first child was being born, and wait, the leadership wait, 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 was wait, still wait, wait. pissed off that he wait. W- people didn't actually, go. people actually breed with these people. Sadly, there are people who are able to breed in that movement. Yeah, <laughs> they're the ones that they pride the most because it's like, oh, look, a white family, uh, well, white family, as they would say, a white um, family, a white family in which the wife is eventually going to leave and take the kid and. Um, take up that would be a, the best case to get and, them away from these yeah, fucking Nazis and, and get together with a person with a man of color who does not abuse her. Possibly, I mean that would be the better case scenario there. But of course, sadly, there are some white females who are very much into that movement. But it happens, and again, <laughs> these people don't give a shit about family. If they're shitting on a person who wants to say and see the birth of his first child, and it's like, no, you gotta come to this rally in Washington, D.C., and fucking march up and down and say our yeah, slogans, yeah, it's like, co- what is check. this other than a fucking cult? Like, Honestly, l- look, look, if you know anything about the demographics of Washington, D.C., Detroit, uh, Chicago, um, if you're white... And you're a, you're a, uh, you're a Klansman, you're a Nazi, you're a fascist, whatever. Like, ain't no way in the world I would be a white Nazi and parade in Washington, D.C. It's literally known as Chocolate City. Hell yeah, no. Yeah, but here's the thing. They constantly get a police escort there. They don't Shit. call them. They just get them. Even though, funny enough, they're all against the police. They're, they're the types of Nazis who would say ACAB because they're not allowed to commit hate crimes freely. But, of course, kind they of, always yeah. get protected by the police. Like those January 6th morons who were like, I think I saw one lady after she had gotten maced by the police. She was like, wow, I see what BLM is talking about now. Fuck cops. <laughs> <laughs> um and um, the one case where they didn't get a police protection, which was in Philly a few years ago, they Ugh. got chased out of the city by like a handful of people. I remember that. Uh, they left. I think they left a U-Haul with all their shit in it, too. Yeah. Oh, and one of the other marches they had in D.C., some infiltrators in the group um, found where they parked their cars. Um, It's Going Down posted the video of it, um, and they just trashed their trucks and cars. They spray painted it, slashed their tires, broke their windows. The people um, who's on the, um, um, the video talking, it's like they were just saying, holy shit, like... That was fucking golden. Uh, sadly, um, I'm pretty sure they're There's not going to be charged with the... Um, I think they actually got... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, they're not going to be charged with the suspected rioting they were going to do in Idaho uh, that they got arrested for like, uh, at the beginning of the year. Look at these little gay-ass uniforms they've got on. Looks like they've all got their slacks tucked into their boots. Here's the thing. I will say this. Patriot Front, out of all the fascist groups in the country, propaganda-wise, they make probably, I would say, the best propaganda from a fascist point of view. Like, it's the most well-made, and it obviously shows. I mean, it's appealing to a certain type of person. Yeah, it's appealing to the same type of person on the right who would be, uh, who would be attracted to the Red Guards on the left. Like they're, yeah. they're not looking for substance. They're not looking looking for actual. Like they're looking for something to be a part of, something to be a part of a unity of sorts, um, activism that seems kind of daring in their mind, but at the in reality, it's not. Yeah. I mean, you're putting up fucking stickers and like spray painting underpasses that cops don't give a shit about. It's like you're not going to be fucking targeted here. Um. Oh, there's a link to off-color decals. Yeah, I mean, even with more extreme groups like uh, the former Adam Waffen Division or the Base, whatever and, happened, and, whatever happened to them, I've heard of the um. I, I'm um, pretty familiar with like the base. Whatever happened. If you'll take, if you'll let me take a minute, I can recite it because I, again, I'm terminally online, so I keep in touch with whatever the fuck these people do. Basically, Adam Waffen got fucking infiltrated very badly by both anti-fascist and feds, <laughs> and um, after a while, um, after a bunch of their members trying to kill people, um, they, um, they decided to disband. Um, they disbanded, I think, in 2020. But up until then, they had basically been doing 
nothing. Um, so they disbanded. Then a bunch of their members make a website. I'm not going to name the website. I know it, but I'm not going to say it. Where they basically just release um, articles talking about like insurgent warfare and ideology bullshit. Then they make a new group called the National Socialist Order. And that group um, goes defunct in less than a year because it gets taken over by Satanists. And <laughs> that the uh, Order of the Nine Angles or whatever. Yes, and they've they've <laughs> denounced the Order of the Nine Angles now because they think it's stupid. Um, <laughs> so then they've made a new group called the National Socialist Resistance Front, which, from all I've seen, has basically done like one banner drop. I, I legitimately i I can't find a website. I can't find a telegram. I can't find anything. Um, uh, their leader, um, the person who founded Adam Buffin, whose name was Brandon Russell, um, he was originally arrested because his um, one of um, his lieutenants um, became a radical Muslim extremist, then killed two other members in his yeah, that, house. I, I remember that uh, Rolling Stone did a write-up on them. The uh, Brandon yes, dude, I think. Sad, sadly, one of the people he killed was actually leaving the movement. So, uh -huh. yeah, that, that fucking sucks. Um, so he kills those two. The police go to Brandon's house, and they notice that, hmm, you have like three refrigerators. He was trying to build. He was he, explosives. Yeah, he was trying to build a dirty bomb. Yeah, he also had a framed picture of Timothy McVeigh. Oh dear. Who, who? If anyone here doesn't know, he's the guy who did the Oklahoma City bombing. Um, so yeah, so they don't arrest him though. They let him go, and then like a day or two days after, the police arrest him and a friend who are going off to do something. And he was put in jail for a few years. Then he was released. And it was recently, like um, at the beginning of the year, him and his girlfriend um, were caught before they, um, because they were planning to destroy a substation, then go shoot up a city. Uh, so yeah, and now Brandon's getting his ass sent right back to jail. So <laughs> that's uh, Adam Waffen right now. Any members of Adam Waffen, either they've left the movement because it got too hot um, for them. They were in it for like, because they thought it was like cool and transgressive, but then the consequences happened and they left. Yeah, or usually, they're now just... Hmm? That's usually what happens with these groups. Like something yeah. really stupid happens. Like it's fun marching. It's fun when you're out playing with guns. But like, and black people like know this innately. Like we're not able yeah. to do stupid shit and evade cause shit. We can't even do stuff that we're supposed to do. And <laughs> like, we can't even do shit we're supposed to do. So like these rich ass white kids, cause that's essentially what most of them are. These yeah. bored rich ass white kids who were raised by the internet because their daddy was off banging hookers and their mom was strung out on Xanax, like <laughs> raised by the fucking internet. And they meet these weirdos who they come to look up to. And then eventually they end up getting fucked over. Same thing with the Red Guards. Same thing with the Pat Sox, the Magacoms, like all these little cults. They attract these fucked up kids. And then, like, when consequences happen, when people start getting arrested or even hurt and killed, then they, they break camp and then they come out and they're like, oh, wow, how did I join that cult? Like, you you wanted to. Like, nobody I mean, did. Nobody held a gun to your head and made you join this thing. I mean, yeah, I understand. Yeah. Like, you're, you're already, you're messed up in the head. But, like, all you had to do was touch grass. All you had to do was, like, people who make friends with normal-ass people, they don't do stuff like that, usually. Yeah. I mean, that was, that was the case for Charlottesville in a lot of places. Uh, you know, after Charlottesville and all that came out, like, it was kind of the rule of thirds. Like, a third of the people there left the movement cold turkey. They saw, oh, shit, people are getting killed, and we're going to have to face consequences. Fuck that. I'm not in the mood for that. A third of them stayed aboard to try and weather it out, and a third of them went underground and got more radicalized. Um, you know, that's the problem when groups like these disband, because... Yeah, some of them leave the movement, but some of them also get harder and decide to fully commit themselves more so to it. And Adam often really took advantage of the failure of Charlottesville 
to basically say, you know, all this protesting, this marching, this LARPing stuff, it doesn't work. It's never worked before. You got to go underground. You got to do that stuff and that, that, that. Uh, of course, they were fucking idiots who had no sense for OPSEC and got fucking it raided by the feds constantly. So they obviously weren't fucking geniuses of guerrilla warfare and asymmetrical warfare. Nah. They were just a bunch of idiot Nazis who liked Satanism. They have a, they have a very, like, they have, it's like reactionary focoismo, if you're familiar with Che Guevara's thoughts on military uh Foco theory. Yeah, yeah. Foco theory. Like it's basically, but it's flipped backwards because only communists, only revolutionaries can apply these things. Like fascists mm -hmm. cannot apply these things because fascists are not for the people. So, yeah. I mean, their whole ideological, like textbooks, the book Siege, which don't read, not because it's a Nazi book, it's because it's fucking boring as shit. I've and read it's like it actually. 600 Oh I've my God! I, you are I, braver than most. It's I went through. Listen, it's a six hundred page Nazi post. I read it. It's a. Oh God! I've read. I've, I've read, read. Listen, parts listen, of it. listen, bro. I've read some weird shit. I've read Harold Covington. I've oh read, my uh, God! The Brigade. Yeah, I've read Harry. I've read Harold Covington. I've read. Oh, uh, I've read basically their Bible, the uh, TD book. Like I've read pretty much uh, all of this diary. shit. I've I've read Mustache Man. Like I've read all of this shit. You got to know your enemy. No, no, exactly. Like, it's sad that you have to know your enemy because, especially Harold Covertang, his books are so fucking thick. And Siege, the reason why Siege is so long is because it was originally a, um, it was originally a newsletter in the 80s, and then it was just compiled into this fucking just tome of insanity and for some reason a bunch of nazis decided okay this is going to be our bible yeah i think and the guy i think the guy that wrote those original newsletters i think he only died a few years ago but like he was a sort nope, of mentor. james mason's still alive right but he was a mentor yep. to a lot of those people like they would hit him yeah up and they'd be like hey what do you think about so-and-so like why the fuck would you consult this geriatric motherfucker but like well he 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 liked it a lot because he had disappeared for many years. So all of a sudden, all these young Nazis are contacting him, basically treating him like a god. So no no shit, he's gonna take advantage of it and like please these people, like taking pictures with them, signing copies of their books. Um, he played a very small role in their thing. Like he was a quote unquote advisor to Adam Waffen, but he always um, did it at an arm's length because um, for those of you who don't know, he had been in jail before because he, um, he was caught with child pornography. Um, <laughs> of course. You know, Pedocon theory. It's a theory like gravity is a theory. It just is. Um, so yeah, Mason, he didn't want to go back to jail. He's old as shit. And um, he just wanted to feel the admiration of a bunch of fucking Nazis. And not only that, but like a lot of those old school fish, like they're pretty, they're pretty keen on security culture. Like most of them, like a lot of them that came up through the eighties and early nineties, the whole like militia movement and shit. Like mm -hmm. they don't even fuck with the newer generation because they think the newer generation is a bunch of idiots. Most of those people are still living on their like little 12 acre plots in a log cabin somewhere. <laughs> Yeah, posse commentators people and yeah. shit like that. Yeah, to get off my lawn types. Yeah, yeah. But in they'll, those they'll cases, still, it's, best, still fuck it's you probably up, best just to leave them alone because yeah. there's nothing really to gain with them. You don't because if you go against them, you're gonna have another fucking like Waco Ruby situation that becomes a fucking propaganda point for these weirdos. Yeah, I think Randy Weaver just died. Randy Weaver? Uh, did he just die? I, I don't so. keep in touch. You don't keep in touch. Like you've actually come, you've actually corresponded with this guy. Oh, he died in 2022. No, I've never corresponded with him. Um, yeah, yeah he Randy did. Weaver. He died a year ago. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Randy Weaver was the um, man at Ruby Ridge that they actually, tried to flip to uh, get into the Aryan Nations, but um, they couldn't he, do it. Yeah, he just wanted to be left the fuck alone. He was yeah, still. A, he, he was still. He just want to be left alone and sell people um, illegally modified shotguns. Okay, <laughs> and I can understand that in a way. He was still racist. As, he was. He was still racist as fuck. But like, he wasn't the organization joining type. No, absolutely. He's one of those. Uh, he's an isolationist racist who just wants to live in his cabin with his white family. It's like those are the lowest people on the list of people who I'm afraid of. 
Like they just want they want to be left alone, whatever. It's like a person who has racist views but doesn't organize at all. It's like, okay, I got a lot more problems right now than you. You're not helping the movement, whatever. But yeah, he would hang around the Aryan Nations compound when it was still a thing before the uh the feds tore it down because their guards shot at um a mother and a daughter in their car. Um, so we're at hour and 40 minutes. Um, so what is y'all's take on the struggle against fascism? Like what can the left do that it's not already doing? Like, what do you think the game plan should be? Stop fighting. Stop. In, you, you mean stop, 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 stop fighting each yeah, other. Stop in fighting. Yeah. Stop eating the left. Like we all have revolution on our mind. Like what Fred Hampton said. We just got to do what's best for our communities. And like, I, as a Maoist, like I've come through like some pretty, some pretty intense, we call them line struggles. Most people would just call them political arguments. Um, Like after that shit, like really nothing much has changes. All that stuff leads to is, uh, is splits. And Mm -hmm. I've been through like three splits splits are painful like they mm. like these people at one at one time these people were prepared to uh to take a beating take a bullet for you and then a couple couple years later they're your worst enemy and you walk away from them at protest because you don't know if you're going to get jumped or yeah, they think geez. you're or they think or they think you're going to jump them so like that a lot the reason that a lot of the left ends up getting burned out ends up with uh, a whole nihilistic thing going on is because like mm. it, it's just so it, it's just so so silly and we split over the stupidest shit now if there's a rapist like a proven rapist in the organization yes break ties with mm-hmm. him if there's somebody who is expressing uh fascist type views by all means break ties with him but if they disagree with you over when China transitioned away from socialism towards capitalism. <laughs> Some people say it happened in 78. Some people say it's still social. Like that's not worth like what exactly do what, what, what influence do we have over the direction of the Chinese government? Like how exactly does us arguing over this make our situation better and the situation of the Chinese people better lead the Chinese people to solve their own problems. And let's focus on solving ours. Yeah. Yes. It's a matter of virtue signaling. Yeah. Unfortunately, you asked a very deep question because what is happening, especially with the left, using that broad term, is we're lacking in an ideological messaging that anybody on the right can pick up. Mm-hmm. Um, and I do speak of it from, say, you know, they, they have a religious and an ideological f- ground that they all can attach their wagons to. Mm. Doesn't matter how far right they are, if they're center right, mid right, moderate, whatever you want to call <clears throat> it. Everybody can sit there and say, yes, we agree on this point. And to, you know, to, to actually, Name it is basically the is basically the the, the Christian vo- uh, point of view. They can take that Christian point of view and all you know as far right and you know all that sort of stuff. And we're missing that, not Christianity in general, but just a a focal ideology that we can all agree upon and hitch our wagons to. Like um. If I could um, kind of reference like his like history and so on, like let's look back to um, Italy during the rise of fascism. You know, Italy is a country that was not doing necessarily well then. They thought that they got cheapened out at Versailles, and suddenly you have the this fascist party led by a former socialist here. He knows how to organize, and he's tapping into a part of the population that's ready and angsty to fight and what does the italian left do well they form anti-fascist units the problem is that a lot of them were simply anti-fascists 
in their idea. They didn't have a more substantive um, program to show compared to the anti-fascists. They were just against the fascists. Well, if you're just against something, you know, that's all well and fine, but you got to give a good alternative to that thing. Yeah. You got to be on point with your messaging. You know, you can be against um, Trump all you want. That's good. You know, Trump's fucking awful. But unless you're going to give something good to the contrary, don't be surprised if other people don't come to your side. Yeah. Like if you all, if all you have to offer is a is a four hundred page manifesto, nobody's going to join you. Because you got to like, be actionable in what you do. Yeah. Like like when you uh, like. And that's how you can tell that somebody doesn't actually regularly regularly talk to regular people. Like if I have a political discussion with my coworkers, they all know I'm a communist, right? Mm -hmm. And like if I'm not prepared, because the major mistake that you make when you're in political organizing is thinking that people are stupid. So people are capable of critical thinking, okay? Regular, average, ordinary, everyday people. So you can criticize, criticize, criticize. Maoists are very good at critique. Leftists in general are very, very good at critique. But an average ordinary person is going to ask you, okay, so what are you going to do about it? Like the reason that the, the, reason that the Black Panther Party was so popular was because they had an answer to the question, what are you going to do about it? The modern left today is like, oh, we need to do so Like it, it's always shit that's supposed to happen far on the horizon like nobody's going to pick up a gun and go initiate a protracted people's war today like nobody's going to do that uh you look at the average american they can still fill their fridge relatively easily they can still put gas in their car relatively easily they still have a pretty decent standard of living people with a pretty decent standard of living do not make armed revolutions <laughs> so if we don't keep that in mind then we're going to forever remain the fringe that's why i'm very happy with some of the directions that like the DSA is going Me too. Um, with their events to like organize with labor unions, which are on the uptick now, you know, the, the iron's hot right now. You better fucking strike it, you know, and also tenant unions and so on and so forth. You know, this is stuff that's going to push people forward and want to join these movements, you know, Tommy sitting Caucus around is, LARPing uh, and speaking like a propaganda bot, you know, that's not going to bring anyone in. Nope. That's why the mega cops and all those others. That's why they're like their followers are mostly bots or each other. Like I think, if, I think each each and every one of them is required to maintain at least twenty sock accounts. Yeah, yeah. I mean, what would you what would you rather do? Organize with some people locally to form a tenants union where you're you know, probably not going to be recognized a lot for what you do, but you're doing a good thing. Or would you rather have this um, big fucking stupid event where you all wear the same hats and have like um, flags everywhere and you sing songs or whatever? It's like, no one cares. Caleb Maupin's not going to get anything done. Who gives a shit about conferences like that? I want something that's tangible and something that can actually help people. Precisely. You know? Uh, Y'all should join DSA. I've considered joining it. Um, I need to get a job first so I can pay dues, but I will be joining in the future. Nice. I've always admired. I've always admired what they've done, even in their more cringy moments. But you know, it is what it is. It can't be perfect. I mean, you can't have an organization with a, with around a hundred thousand members without cringe. Yes, exactly. It's bound to happen. There's some cringe in the pot. There's always some cringe in the pot. If an organization with two members has cringe, then an organization with 100,000 members is going to have cringe, but it also has things that are based. Yeah. The thing is, you just weather through it and you keep trying to do the based things. If you leave a movement based. just because there's some cringe in it, I'm sorry. You were kind of a weak-willed person to begin with. All right, Nietzsche. Uh -huh. <laughs> Be now nah, my book beyond based and cringe. I will read your book. So, is there anything that we want to wrap up with? Um, if anyone's interested in taking a look at our site here, of course, that's uh, socialistra.org. Um, we're always open to inquiries. There's a contact us form on there. You can get in contact regarding membership. Uh, I want to just take a second here, thank the host. Thanks for having us on. I know it's um. It's uh, it's tough bringing people on a show that you don't necessarily know. You're not really certain of their platform, and I appreciate your vote of confidence here. And honestly, I had a great I, time. 
Y'all think I didn't do research on y'all before I agreed to let y'all come on my show? Oh, I'm sure you did research on our organization, but you, you, like, you didn't did know you, what individuals you were getting. Did y'all think I was going to let y'all, ah, there you are, BRG, you right as uh, twine. Finally, a platform we can use to spread our vile propaganda. You right um, as twine, now you will suffer the consequences of your defection from surprise, the Surprise, it's actually a sock puppet account for Yankee Tanky. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't uh, find that funny. Um, what was I going to say? Um... Yeah, if you want to check us out, our Twitter account is usually a good place to get in contact with us. If you're in the upstate New York region and you want to organize something together with us, hit us up. Uh, we're also on Facebook. Um, Facebook sucks, but of course, we got to be on it. One thing uh, I we like also about, have an, no, you know. The only thing I like about Twitter is that like, I can actually say things without fear of getting banned. Like you really have really? to fuck. You really have to fuck up, fuck up to get banned from Elon Musk's Twitter, Facebook. Oh yeah, face Facebook. Yeah. You Facebook. You say the wrong word without an asterisk, and you are banned. I mean, Juniper literally had to call him the the p word to get fucking banned. So that was funny. <laughs> Unban him. Uh, uh, them. Sorry. Unban them. Reinstate comedy on Twitter. Damn it, Juniper! Is it that one of uh, Keffels' friends or something? I don't know. They just shit post a lot, and I find it funny. All right. Um, do we want to close with an all power to the people? All power to. Uh, all oh, power. also uh, free Palestine. Just indeed prerequisite. I've got a giant ass picture of the Al Aqsa Mosque here. I forgot the free Palestine and all power. Oh to the hell people. yeah! Good night. All power to the people.